Perfect. Yeah, I just got that pop up. Thank you. So I uh, wanted to start out this morning by thanking everybody for joining us uh, for our workshop with General Assembly. And um, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Nikki Kabus. I'm the VP of Development for Palm Beach Tech. Um, for those of you that don't know or haven't seen some of our recent uh, virtual events, we actually just announced about a month ago that we're going to be expanding to become a regional South Florida organization. So soon we'll be announcing that uh, more formally at um, a anniversary happy hour that we have coming up uh, July 15th, which happens to be our fifth year anniversary. Um, and to give you a brief overview of what we do, we're basically a tech nonprofit. Um, whole goal and mission is to build South Florida into a tech hub. So we work with a lot of the colleges, universities, coding schools, the headquartered companies here, um, the talent itself, um, with the goal of upskilling people, keeping people here, attracting talent, attracting businesses to the area, anything that we can do to help, you know, just um, kind of keep that community together and connect people through networking and um, opportunities like this. Um, so I don't want to take too much time because I know a lot of people have seen this intro and different events that we do. I definitely want to hand this over to Carrie um, and have her explain a little bit about uh, General Assembly, what they offer, and then her role there. Yes, thanks, Nikki. Brad, if you can share your screen so we can get started. There we go. All right, one second here. Let's go with... All right. All right, perfect, thank you. Um, so welcome everybody. This is officially our first workshop with Palm Beach Tech. I am Carrie Perez. I'm the community manager for South Florida and for St. Louis since um, this month actually. Uh, that means that it is my job to take General Assembly's courses, workshops, events, thought leadership, programs, resources, talent, people, everything that I can gather and bring them to not just Miami, but we just did an event in Fort Lauderdale yesterday, and now we're in Palm Beach, and we're taking it all down to South Florida. Um, Brad, you can click next. So if it's your first time hearing about General Assembly, we are a coding boot camp. That's how it started anyways in 2011. Um, and Brad, if you can hit next again. Um, what we do is, we started in 2011 and we started teaching coding classes to people that really wanted to switch careers and break into tech um, and they didn't know how. But since then we've grown to 35 campuses across the world and we've just launched St. Louis, Tampa, Charlotte, um, Nashville and Louisville uh, last Friday. And so we continue to grow. We've also launched Manchester, Edinburgh and Adelaide and Brisbane up in the UK and Australia. So we continue to build a global community of adults that want to either learn to code, learn UX design, data, marketing, business, which most likely is around product management and career development, which is what we're doing here today. Um, how we do this is either a full-time course for 12 weeks where we help you find a job afterwards. So for 12 weeks, you come full-time to GA and you um, learn the basics in order to break into probably a junior role, but we do see people going into um, higher positions. Um, and the reason why they're able to do that is because they get a career coach assigned to them through the entire process that will guide them through that um, job search dynamic that is complicated and now it has gotten more complex because of COVID. Um, but if you're not interested in career switching and you're just interested in learning new skills to be dangerous enough, for example, I as a marketing professional, I'm starting to know how to code because I'm building landing pages at all times, or maybe you're a UX designer that wants to know more about data analytics, um, or you're a business leader that needs to know more about data science, we have also part-time programs for you so that you can just be dangerous enough to be able to get that promotion, manage that new project, get a team going for something interesting. Um, but most of the time, what I'm actually doing is producing things like today, which are two hour workshops around any topic that you can imagine, SEO, um, career development, LinkedIn sourcing, data science, Python, R, obviously anything related to code. And we are starting to dig into a little bit of machine learning and AI as well, which is very exciting 
two years ago, we signed a um, partnership with Microsoft and we've been testing our machine learning and AI workshops and curriculum with companies or enterprises because we reskill teams as well. And so I'm really excited to try to dig into what that would look like, bringing some AI into the, this two hour format. Um, if you have any questions about General Assembly, ga.co, you'll find all the information there. And I'll make sure to send my information to you guys afterwards. Um, I just want to point out that this is usually what General Assembly looks like. These are pictures from all our campus all over the world. We are proud that our community of students is over 80,000 people. Um, here in South Florida specifically, we have 34 students going through the program. Six of them are actually from Fort Lauderdale. So I'm really excited about growing up north. Um, but we are building an online community as well. Yesterday, we did an event, like I said, with in Fort Lauderdale. We had 188 people logged in. Today we're building more. And so I think if COVID, you know, pros and cons, but definitely it allows us to reach more people and it allows us to connect you with more talent and opportunities and networking all over the world. Um, but without further ado, I am super excited to bring Brad into the conversation. Um, he is part of our outcomes team and I didn't speak about outcomes before like I usually do because I really wanted to let him do it. But outcomes is the golden department at GA, at least that's how I call it, because they are a full-time team of career coaches that allow our students or that help our students and they guide them through that job search process and career change process. It's a lifestyle decision. It's not just, you know, careers at the center of every of our life. Um, and so he is gonna talk a little bit about what career coaching and outcomes at GA is, but more importantly, he's going to show you the power of our career coaching team and our outcomes team. Uh, Brad is actually in LA, so it's seven in the morning for him. So Brad, thank you for being in South Florida with us today. And let's get started. Awesome. Uh, thanks for the introduction there, Carrie. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Perfect. Cool. So yes, as uh, Carrie mentioned, I am a career coach here at General Assembly. I'm currently located in Los Angeles, though actually in a couple of weeks I am relocating to the East Coast. So this will be my new time zone, so I'm just getting used to it right now. Um, as a career coach here at General Assembly, I work directly with the students in our 12-week bootcamp programs that are generally focused around UX design, software development, and data science. And what I do in summary is make sure that our students are able to walk the walk and talk the talk once they graduate. So much of, of this program is so difficult in, in learning the technological skills that we wanna make sure that people can actually apply those skills forward and show hiring managers what they're capable of once they graduate. So this comes everything, uh, includes everything from developing your personal brand. What's your persona gonna look like online so that way hiring managers and recruiters can find you online, but also how do we make sure that your materials, your LinkedIn, your online portfolio, your resume um, are polished and meeting the industry standards and looking the way that it should be for these particular markets. Uh, and then we also help through uh, developing our, our networking strategies and our ability to find opportunities. And then finally, of course, going through all of the interview process. You know, what does it look like to be successful through behavioral interviews? How do you answer that dreaded question of tell me about yourself or tell me about your biggest failure? And we also work through making sure that you can get through technical interviews so that way you can really showcase those new skill sets. So that's done through weekly meetings with me throughout the entire course. And then once you graduate, also weekly meetings to make sure that you're still on course and on the path to getting a job. I know if you're here, you've probably been part of a difficult job search before, just any job search and realize how hard it can be not only to find opportunities, but to stay motivated. And so a lot of my job is making sure you have that support and you have those mechanisms to be successful in that search. Um, part of the reason why I'm here is I have a background in recruitment. So I started as a technical recruiter in Los Angeles. And so I was helping companies not only find candidates, but also helping coach my candidates through those interview process to make sure that they got those new opportunities that they really deserve to have. And so when I saw this opportunity at General Assembly where I could join and kind of give all the sneak peeks, tips and tricks that exist in the background that the hiring professionals know, it gave them directed to the candidates. Well, I just jumped straight at it. One of my favorite things to do was seeing someone really transform their career into something that they loved and enjoyed. So uh, being able to do that 
pretty much every day here at General Assembly, it, it's really exciting. This is probably the only job I've ever had where I consistently look forward to going every single day. I mean, it, it was a 6 a.m. wake up call this morning, but it felt like nothing. I, I love being here. So in order to make sure we get through everything, I'm gonna keep on moving forward into uh, the rest of today's lesson. So uh, for today's agenda, uh, we'll be going over just quickly the guidelines to make sure that this lesson is as effective as possible. Then I wanna break down exactly why I'm going to be doing today's lesson, which is searching through Boolean. Um, if, if you've done the traditional job search, you know that searching for a marketing position or searching for a software developer position can be a little bit overwhelming. And so we're gonna talk about where that traditional search, that to those traditional methods kind of uh, leave us for wanting more and how we can improve that. And that's gonna be through Boolean, which some of you may have learned already in school. And then uh, we're going to take a look at actually uh, going through a search. I'll do a little bit of a quick live demo so you can see what it looks like. And then we're gonna talk about how we can follow through and proactively not only job search, but also network using these Boolean skills as well. So that is my prompt to start getting right into it. Just keep in mind that I might ask you a couple questions and if you could jump to the chat box, that'll be pretty, that'll be the most effective way. I don't think we're using the Q and A function this time. So we'll just stick to the chat box. And then if you have any lingering questions, please feel free to add me on LinkedIn. You'll get that a little bit later today and I'll be happy to answer your questions or as many as I can. So the traditional search. When we're using the traditional uh, search, we're typically using what's called a job board aggregator. Um, these are things that you've probably seen out there. This might be, you know, career builder or monster are the really classic ones, or like say LinkedIn's job search uh, function or ZipRecruiter or Glassdoor, any place where you're able to search for a large number of job descriptions. This is what I'm talking about here. Companies will post to this board, but these, but these boards will also scrape the web to find job descriptions that exist out there, even without a company posting them. As a result of that, you have most boards that have hundreds or thousands of opportunities per job title out there. And that should seem like a good thing, but unfortunately, they're a little bit, there's a little bit of an issue with that. The first one with that is as we take a look, I've thrown up just screenshots of a few uh, of the, the key roles that our students go through at General Assembly. First being UX designer, where uh, just a broad search of that LA showed that there are 379 search results. If we go on to like a data analyst, if you went to our data science program, that's like 642. Or software developer, nearly 3,000 jobs. And that seems like a good thing. That seems like we have our pick of the litter that we can make anything happen. But as you know, if you've gone through job descriptions, not every single job description is a perfect match. So we wanna make sure that we can start breaking down these searches to find the roles that actually matter to us. So the first issue is that there are way too many different job aggregators to search through. There are way too many different job titles and job descriptions to search through. And if our search is slower, that means we'll get out fewer applications. If we have fewer applications, I'm sure you've probably all heard that uh, searching for a job is a numbers game. And if you get fewer applications out, that means you have fewer opportunities to succeed. So we wanna make sure that we can uh, use a search method that increases the number of overall applications we can get out there. The other one out there is that there are way too many job titles. No matter what field you are in, there's probably a whole bunch of different ways or a whole bunch of different titles that companies might describe your role. Let's say, um, even if it's, if it's something like very generic, like say sales, well, that could be sales, that can be inside sales, that can be business representative, representative, this could be a business developed specialist, right? There's so many different titles that exist out there. And if we have to do one search for each one of those titles, that will also really slow us down. So here I showed exactly, again, some products here at General Assembly. Here are those just the first few titles that came to my mind. In UX, here are about 20 different titles that might exist in the UX field. Software development, here's about 20 to 30. Data science, it's shorter, it's about maybe eight, but there's still plenty that are out there. These lists are by no means all inclusive. So if we're doing eight title searches for a role, well, again, that's 
eight times the length that's going to take us to find what we're looking for. So as we've talked about, too many jobs, too many different titles. So what do we do to make our lives easier and make sure that we actually find what we're looking for? We have to change our focus. We have to start thinking like a recruiter might, and we have to start searching for what we want to do rather than for the title that we want to have. Because ultimately what we do in the job in the day to day is what's gonna make us enjoy what we're doing, be happier about what's going on. So to talk about this, for the next few screens, I'm gonna show you the difference between a job title and what the job role actually does. And as we go through this, I want you to be thinking about the job role that you might possibly want, the job title you might want, and the key responsibilities that you might have in that job title. So for example, what I mean by that is here we have software developer. And a software developer, well, especially if you're gonna be working on the front end, that means that your four key responsibilities probably are going to include HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. So to really drive this home, what I'm saying is, if I wanna be a software developer, I wanna be someone who worked with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. To take this even further, if we're gonna be a UX designer, I'm saying I wanna be someone who works with possibly sketch and does wireframing and prototyping and research, really breaking these down at these core components. Um, I'm not gonna put Carrie on the spot, but I could ask her, you know, as someone who is a community manager, what are those four key responsibilities? Or someone coming from marketing, what are those four key responsibilities? Start thinking about that because we'll be using that in a little bit. Same thing with data scientists here. Uh, analysis and modeling and statistics in Python. Make sure that you're really breaking these down because this is going to be where we start our new type of search method. The issue is how do we search by terms? Because I think we've all been in, in on Indeed or LinkedIn and we just searched for our title, you know, say career coach or recruiter. That's easy, but that's not effective. So we have to somehow figure out how we're going to go back and search by these terms. And the way we're going to do that is with Boolean. So as I mentioned, some of y'all may have already worked with Boolean in the past. Schools used to teach Boolean. They, pro they haven't really in the last 15 years or so, um, at least not from what I normally get from my students, uh, because uh, search engines have gotten really strong. Boolean is an older search method for better utilizing a search engine, but nowadays you just don't need it in your day-to-day -day life. But in summary, what it is, is a search method for determining whether or not a certain web page is true, or if a, a sorry, a Boolean will return a web page if what you're searching for is true. So, for example, a really basic one: if I search Bradford Smith in Google, it's only going to return web pages where Bradford Smith shows up on those web pages. If it's not true, if there's no Bradford Smith on there that web page is not gonna show up. That's traditionally how a job search method works. This is the way that recruiters do their job. And it, that's the reason why I want you all to be using it as well. It's broken down by these three terms, and, or, and not. We're gonna break this down in just a little bit. I'm gonna explain why recruiters use Boolean so you can understand why we're gonna use it on our side. So recruiters, what they have to do is just digest and understand job descriptions. They have to take a job description from a client. They have to gather requirements from a client and figure out what they're actually looking for. A client might say, hey, I really need a software developer. But when there's so many different types of software developers out there, it doesn't really help. So the recruiter has to figure out, okay, what kind of software developer is out there? Then they have to find they have to spend a bunch of hours looking for that perfect candidate and hopefully find a needle in a haystack. If that sounds familiar, it's pretty much the exact same thing that you're doing in your job search as well. They can't search for candidates based on job title because that's not going to be helpful for them. There's too many places for them to search. And with job titles being inconsistent between companies, they have to focus more on responsibilities. So if you see, the recruiter pretty much has the same issues that we have as job searchers. That's why we're going to steal their method and use it to our advantage. So going back to Boolean, we have three operators, as I mentioned already and, or, and not. Now there's a little wrinkle in there already because not sometimes can show up differently. It can sometimes just be a minus sign. It can sometimes be 
and minus. So while Boolean, this concept of, uh, is universal across search engines, sometimes there are a little bit of a difference between search engines. However, we're not gonna have to worry about using the not operator and I'll explain that in a few slides. The good thing to, or the one big thing to really remember is that Boolean search operators are always case sensitive. So when we are using these in our search engines, we have to make sure that and, or, and not are all capitalized. So to show you a little bit what I mean, I'm using the split screen function again, and you'll see the uh, search operator that I'm talking about on the left-hand side and it being executed in a Google search on the right-hand side. So when I'm using the and function, um, I'm looking for two terms that are going to be on the same web page. So by looking for software and developer, it's only gonna return back web pages that have both of those terms on the web page somewhere. This one's pretty straightforward. It's almost the same thing as just searching for software developer, but this makes sure that both these terms are there. If either one of those terms is not on the web page, the web page will not return back to me. If we move on to or, this is just saying I don't care which of these terms pop up, but I want to make sure that at least one of them does. So if it's software or developer, either the page, web page will show up if either software or developer or both terms are on the web page. So this is like a wider net. I don't care which term is there, but I want at least one of them to be represented. And then finally, not, or in Google's case, and minus, which is why I'm showing it in this uh, format. Minus also just works too, but again, let's not worry about that too much. When it comes down to software and minus de uh, developer, I'm saying I wanna find web pages that have software, software but if developer is anywhere on that web page, do not return it back to me. So this is how I uh, reduce the amount of pages that come back. However, not is generally way more powerful than we want it to be. And I would recommend that until you've been doing this for a while to completely ignore the not function. It's just going to make your life a little more difficult than it has to be. But I wanna pose a question to the audience. What if I want to use not for a very specific reason? Say I am a junior candidate or a mid-level candidate, so I want to just get rid of all senior roles. What would happen if I threw minus senior or not senior into my search? How might that might that affect things? Anyone feeling brave enough to jump in the chat? All right, I'll move on for it. I'll answer this one for you. Uh, search will exclude senior roles. Absolutely, Ryan. But uh, it will also mention possibly junior mid-level roles that uh, mention working with senior people in that role. So say it's a junior developer role, but in it, it says you'll work directly with senior developers. Well, now you've all of a sudden gotten rid of a job description that's incredibly relevant to you. So that's why we really have to think deeply about why we want to use that not operator and why most of the times it is not going to be beneficial to do so. So, um, so generally it's like for my students, this is where I see it get over applied a little too much. So as I said, please try and avoid using the not operator until you've gotten really used to using this. But we have to further refine our search just a little bit using just and or and not will only take us so far. We have to make things a little bit more specific in order to really make this beneficial for us. So to talk about this, I'm gonna go back to the and operator using software and developer. When it does this search, remember that I'm looking for a web page where both of these terms pop up. However, what the, the search engine doesn't care about is the order of these roles. So even though I might be looking for software developer, the search engine itself doesn't care if software fall is followed by developer. They just have to be in two places on the web page anywhere. So I need a way to tell a web page that I'm not looking just for software and developer. I'm looking for that single term. So the way that we're going to do this, uh, or sorry, to illustrate this too, if I do just search for software developer by itself, this also does not work because the search engine inherently thinks there is an and between it. 
So this is the same case. Software developer is the same as software and developer. It'll look for a web page with both those terms, but not necessarily next to each other. So we have to use quotation marks. And quotation marks will tell the search engine that we're looking for a joint term. So you'll see a few examples down at the bottom where uh, open qu uh, quotation, software developer, close quotation means it will only return a web page to me if both those terms are in the exact order that I put it in. Same thing with say UX designer or data analyst. This could be again used for any other term, let's say marketing specialist, right? But then we have a different obstacle. And this one, I'm definitely gonna ask for a little bit of your help. This one is really helpful with, with uh, some nice um, uh, participation here. I've got this very uh, scary, but basic math problem. Five plus six times seven. Does anyone in the chat want to jump in and tell me uh, the answer for this one? Ah, perfect. I'm getting both the answers that I'm hoping to see. I'm seeing 47 and 77. Um, it seems like we're pretty split on there. So um, if we all remember back to school, we have uh, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, however you might remember of it. Um, but we know that because of that, multiplication comes before addition. Six times seven is 42 plus five is 47. But this is also not the most efficient way to write this, or at least not for our human eyes. This doesn't really work for us, right? We can make our lives easier by adding in these parentheses. And now we know it's five plus six times seven. This is the same issue that we might face when we're going into the Boolean search. So let's say I'm looking for a UX role. Here I have a search, UX and Figma or Sketch. Well, am I looking for UX and Figma or Sketch? Or am I looking for UX and Figma or Sketch? How do we do this? We use the same logic and move it forward. So we use those parentheses with the OR function. So now we're telling the, the search engine, I'm looking for UX and then either Figma or Sketch. So basically saying UX, I really care about, but Figma or Sketch, I don't really, doesn't matter to me which one. So just show me either one of those as long as UX is there. So the parentheses helps group a, um, a large or multiple items together that may not be the highest priority, but something that you would be able to work with they're almost always going to be used with an or phrase. It's very rare that you will use or without those parentheses. So I would say get in the habit of always including open and closed parentheses when you're using or. I have another example down here where say, um, you know, Harry was talking about we're testing um, AI machine learning with Microsoft right now. So this would be a relevant search for someone learning in those classes. I know I wanna work with data. Data for sure has to be there. So I'm looking for data and well, I don't really care if it's specifically machine learning or artificial intelligence. So I'll add that in the or phrase. But I also know that machine learning is sometimes abbreviated to ML and artificial intelligence is sometimes abbreviated to AI. And I know that on job descriptions, sometimes people won't bother to put full on machine learning or artificial intelligence out there. So within that or phrase, I will also throw in alternative ways to write those terms. So I have machine learning or ML or artificial intelligence or AI. So no matter which way that this technology is written on the job description, my search engine is gonna find it for me. To show a little bit more of a drastic case, if you're say in a design oriented field where you might be working with something like the Adobe Creative Suite, or I think nowadays it's called the Adobe Creative Cloud, well, there's a million and one ways that it can be written on a job description. So if we take a look at a UX search, again, I know I want to be doing UX and I know that I can work with Adobe products, but I don't know how they're going to write it on their job description. So I'm going to include Adobe, I'm going to include Photoshop, I'm going to cre include Creative Suite or Creative Cloud or Adobe Creative Cloud or Illustrator or all these other terms, right? It gets a bit redundant and that's totally okay. This just guarantees you will find exactly what it is what you're looking for. You'd hate to miss an opportunity because you said UX and Photoshop, but for some reason the job description you were looking for said UX and Adobe Photoshop, right? That's why you have to make sure you open this net. 
You can simplify this a little bit more though, which we're gonna talk about next. So the last modifier that we have is asterisk. So the asterisk when it comes to Boolean search is also called the wild card. The asterisk is used to the end, uh, is added to the end of words or more specifically stems in order to search for stems with the similar beginning. So a really quick, easy way to demonstrate this is my full name is Bradford. I normally go by Brad. If I'm gonna look for Bradford on the internet, well, one way I could do that would be to write Brad asterisk. And then the internet, the search engine is gonna return any web page that has Brad or Brad Lee or Bradford or any other variation of Brad that you can think of. Um, keep in mind as we go through this, that LinkedIn does not necessarily support this. So you can't use it there. All your other job search boards though, should be effective for you. So other examples down here is say I'm looking for something in data science, right? Well, there are so many different ways that might pop up. Either it's data science or data scientist or data sciences. Well, if I just do sign, S-C-I-E-N asterisk, that kind of common stem, that common root between all of them, all of a sudden I'm able to search for all four, five, six terms or versions of science that might pop up on a job description with just one term. So earlier with the with or when we were talking about uh, Photoshop, I had a bunch of different ways to search for Photoshop. Well, there might be one simpler way to search for a bunch of different versions of Photoshop. Maybe it's just Adobe asterisk, and it'll search for anything with Adobe followed by something else, right? So this is how we simplify those or phrases and simplifies our searches so they don't become a thousand characters long. You can see this can be applied in a whole bunch of places. Uh, could be added to HTML, you know, say you really specifically, you don't care if you work with HTML or HTML5, well, this makes sure that you pull up any version number that pops up. Now, um, one thing I want to also pose back to the class is um, what would happen if I were to put a asterisk within quotations? Anybody have any idea? All me. All right. Uh, so if we put a wild card in quotations, that is actually going to search directly for that asterisk, right? So if I search for cyan star in, in quotations, then that means that my search engine is only going to return web pages that have cyan star. So you can use the asterisk alone by itself. You can use it in an or phrase but you cannot use it in quotations. So just be aware of that. Otherwise you might have some things uh, messing with your search just a little bit. So to put it all together, I wanna to research or summarize real quick. I mentioned we use and, we're looking for any terms connected by that and phrase. So Bradford and Smith, both Bradford and Smith have to show up on the web page. I'm looking for Bradford or Smith only one of those terms has to show up. Bradford, not Smith. Well, none of my material is going to show up, but any other Bradford who isn't named Bradford Smith is going to pop up there. Quotations means I'm looking exactly for some key terms. Parentheses means I'm looking for multiple things within an or phrase. And an asterisk is looking for a very specific key term. I do want to take one moment and pause there and see if there are any questions. If so, please throw them in the Zoom chat before we, we move on and start doing a little bit more of a live demo. Uh, Nora asks, how does LinkedIn use search? Uh, perfect question. We're gonna go in and do a live demo of that in just a moment. So thank you for asking. Um, See here, ESM11 asked about for a senior business analyst role, how would you do the search? Uh, that's really great. The first thing I would do um, would be a little annoying and throw it back to you and ask, what are the most important aspects of your job that you want to cover? So for example, when I think of a senior business analyst, uh, the first thing that always comes to my mind is gathering requirements. 
I imagine that's probably going to be one of the, the key terms there. Uh, documentation, maybe user stories, user interviews, something along those lines. Um, and then also where in the senior or sorry, which industry do you want to be in? You know, are you, are you a senior business analyst on the tech side of things? Are you more on the marketing or sales types of things? Maybe you give that category too. So it might be something like gather requirements and documentation and whatever, right? This is me. I don't, uh, I, I used to, I have not recruited for senior business analysts in a while. So I, but I, I know I'm missing a few terms there, but I would challenge you to, to look at it that way. Um, any other questions there? I'm not. All right. I think I'm going to keep on going a little bit forward. Oh, here we go. Um, good question about tech uh, certifications. We can come back to that a little bit at the, at the end of class. If I don't get to this, please just uh, feel free to throw it back in chat. Um, oh, and uh, thank you, Steve, for your question. So um, a couple of the things I want to talk about here is the more terms that you connect with that and phrase, the more specific your search is going to be. And that means the fewer search results you're going to get. My good rule of thumb is to limit the number of uh, terms that you connect by the and phrase by to just three or maybe four terms at the most. Otherwise, you're probably going to get too specific too quickly and realize that there's nothing out there for you. So the way I like to break it down is you should use the and part of your phrase. So let's go back to senior business analyst. You know, um, we could do like analysis and requirements gathering and then a huge slew of items in an or phrase to cast a wider net, a wider net. I know I want to do analysis. I know I want to gather requirements, which is a sentence I realized I don't think I've ever heard someone say before, but regardless, let's pretend that's the case. I want to gather requirements. And then here are all the other optional things that I'd like to do, but are not deal breakers for me. And then another thing to keep in mind. So I'm um, throwing it in there would be like say for a software developer. Um, I know that I want to work with HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Those are non-starters, like they have to be there. But then I don't care if I work with Node or React or Firebase or Python or Ruby or even do some UX or UX design, right? We can throw some other interesting things in there. And this was just an example I threw in earlier today. And the titles that came back to me were full stack developer, web developer, JavaScript developer, software engineer, front end developer. And this is showing how we can get the variety of titles using the same search. So now we've reduced the amount of work we have to do. We can do one really key targeted search and generally have success. Now that's also the case you've been doing this for a while. If you're new to Boolean, you'll probably need to do a few searches just to make sure you get it correctly. Another good tip here is if you know a special tool or software or language where you have certifications or you have special domain knowledge, throw that into the and phrase to really make it specific. So let's say that you um, are a scrum master. Let's say you have that. Well, you could do um, analysis and scrum and gather requirements. And now you're gonna find all of the business analyst related roles that require a scrum certification. And now all of a sudden you've found roles that you might be at the top of the pile for. Or say perhaps you um, are fluent in Spanish and there is a job role that requires the candidate to speak Spanish. Well, now all of a sudden you've found all those positions where you are going to be a star candidate. Uh, for an example here, I was recruiting for um, an entertainment company's uh, Mexico City team a few years ago and finding people who were fluent in Spanish to be able to go work there was really difficult. But when I was able to use uh, Boolean to search just for people who had Spanish on their resumes, then all of a sudden I was able to find my uh, candidates a whole lot quicker. So where are we going to go search? Um, uh, the top sites that I recommend, the first one is Google's job board. This one's a little silly because there's no direct URL to get to their job board. I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, but you basically have to Google search for jobs to pull it up. LinkedIn is another great place. I'm sure we've all probably used LinkedIn at some point, or if not, um, it's a very easy one to pick up. Indeed is another classic one that, that are out there. Glassdoor I find is really powerful. And then finally, ZipRecruiter. 
I put this one up here with a little bit of a joke only because it was a little bit, mm, it wasn't super robust when it first came out. Um, now, after about a year and a half, two years since I first started using it, it has become really strong. And uh, so I, I definitely see this praises. Check out ZipRecruiter as well. Between these five sites, you should probably be totally golden, but don't be afraid to go try and check other places out. Um, especially as the tech hub in Miami continues to build, check out a website like say AngelList. AngelList is a website entirely dedicated to startups. You never know what startup opportunities might be out there available in your community. And usually the community is very responsive. If you, re if you apply to a job on AngelList, you have a very high chance of being uh, reached out to. So I wanna make sure that um, we get to some more questions and answers at the end. So we'll probably do a live demo for the next five, six minutes, and then I'll turn it on over to you all. Uh, Ryan mentioned about uh, doing Stack Overflow for web devs as well. That's also a uh, totally fantastic suggestion. Thank you, Ryan. So let me break out of this presentation really quickly. And let's go to uh, Google. So as I mentioned earlier, there is no direct uh, URL to get to Google's job search board. However, if you just Google search jobs, like I have up here, then you can click on this header in jobs. And this is going to pull you basically to a custom job search board within uh, Google search engine. And then from here is where I'm able to enter my Boolean search. So, um, for example, um, oh, Nora, I see you mentioning about remote. We can take a look at that as well. Um, let's go back to Steve. Would you mind if I ask? I'm curious about your senior business analyst role, actually. Um, if you could break down your senior business analyst role into like three responsibilities, what would you make them? Or maybe any other business analyst on the, on the call. Looks like we're getting some stuff here. Process improvement requirements data. Love it. Okay. So data and let's go, let's see if we have process improvement. And requirements. Let's just start there. Let's see what happens. I'm not even going to bother with that word phrase right now. And you know what location? Um, we are going to um, change this. So actually, before we do that, just showing off here in Los Angeles, like what pops up. Yeah, an associate business process analyst. So that's maybe on the junior side. Business pro process consultant, senior business process analyst. We're seeing a lot of this process analyst pop up, probably because of the process improvement. But you can see how we're finding these, these uh, types of roles all over the place. I changed my location. Oh, I guess right now I am in, uh, I am anywhere. Um, see, I can't change it to Miami too quickly. What I could do is um, do that. And I'll show up just one that pops up in Miami. Oh, that's within two miles anywhere. And this, I am playing this weird. So the, also the issue here is we're not just looking for things that are solely located in Miami. Remember any job description that mentions Miami. So these places might all have traveled to Miami. If I was closer to you, I could just set this to Miami a lot quicker. But this is basically what we're looking for. Now, if we're um, not going to do this, um, let's see here. Now we could also add in an or. And I'm seeing some other things that were uh, submitted to the senior business analyst. So I'm seeing that people wrote in analytics, which here's an opportunity for us to, um, to use the wildcard actually. I'll use um, Anali to, to look for analytics and anal analyze anal analysis or SQL or database and see if those help us break it down even a little bit further. And so again, we pull up these business process analyst roles, the senior analyst roles that also will include uh, analysis or SQL or databases or anything like that. 
So this is a very broad one. We can get more specific, but this is what it begins to look like. Now, if we go to LinkedIn, we can do the exact same thing. So let me make that a little bigger. But so for example, let me grab this search here. So I'm just gonna copy this, go to LinkedIn. I'm gonna go, I'm hitting jobs to load just because LinkedIn can be a little slow when I'm on Zoom. It looks like it's playing nicely with me right now. I'm gonna just paste in that same search that we had in Google, hopefully. There we go. As I mentioned, the asterisk does not work in LinkedIn. So I'm going to get rid of that um, asterisk and I'm going to change it with analysis just because I think that's the most likely term. And then let's just go with Miami. See what pops up. And perfect. So now we have senior analysts, we have manager roles, we have analyst roles all in here. But we know that every single one of these jobs that we click into is going to include those important points, uh, process improvement, gathering requirements, uh, SQL database, all of that jazz. So even if it doesn't seem like we've gotten just the senior analyst roles that we were looking for, all of these should have relevant job descriptions for what we're looking to do. And I know for senior business analysts, this may not be as specialized. So we may have to get a little bit more specific, but for other roles where things are a little bit more broad, this is certainly going to be powerful. Um, now, I want to show you also just one more way that we can use this powerfully in order to say network or in order to help us um, apply to a, a, a job. One of the things that we always uh, preach here at General Assembly is that when you apply to jobs, if you want people to get back to you, you should probably reach out to someone who works on the team or perhaps recruit at that company. So that way it increases your chance of having your resume be seen. So let's take the first one that pops, pops up here, um, Leonard here. So if I wanna find someone on that team, I can do the exact same thing on the people search. That's the default search that pops up here. So I can say do Leonard and apologies. I'm gonna jump back and see what the title is. Manager, strategy and innovation. So I wanna find someone on the strategy and innovation team that I can talk to. So I've got the company name first and strategy and I'll just forgot about the race, strategy and innovation. So hopefully anyone on that team at Leonard should pop up on my search. So here we go. We found, we found Mitra, who's a senior analyst at Leonard um, on the strategy and innovation team. Let's see here, Michael perhaps might be a good person, but those look like to be the two key folks, right? So I can go over to Mitra and see also she's a senior analyst. Ooh, perhaps maybe perfect for me. So I know I can't see a connect button because she's out of my network, but if I hit this more button, I can hit connect with her. I can add a note to her and say, hey Mitra, came across the senior um, manager role at Leonard and was hoping to learn more. How do you like working on the team? Could I take the time to pick your brain a bit? And we send a connection. And maybe she'll accept us, maybe she won't. But if she accepts us, she can probably give us more information on Leonard and help us figure out exactly what they're looking for. So I can make my application even stronger. Or I can look back at Mitra's uh, qualifications, see where she went. Ooh, maybe I also went to Florida International University. That's a connection that we can have. I can maybe leverage that a little bit to help me get in that job as well. Um, another thing we can do too for a really simple search is say, take a look at Leonard and we look for someone who's either a recruiter or in talent acquisition and see if there's perhaps a, a recruiter that works with the team. And she, wow, we've quickly find Katie Shapiro, who is the director of talent acquisition at Leonard. Well, she's also a perfect person I want to reach out to. And I can go back, I can hit same thing. I can connect with her. I can add a note and say, hey there, just apply to the senior manager role. Hoping to learn more. I am a great, great fit for this role for re reasons X, Y, and Z. 
And perfect. Now you've gone straight to the source. You've gone to the person who's responsible for outreach for this role and told them, hey, look at me. I applied to this job. I'm a good fit. Come talk to me. And now our chances of being reached out to are much, much higher. So in short, this is how we can use Boolean not only to find our jobs, but then to proactively network and find the people at those jobs. So that way we can be stronger candidates and um, continue to meet more people with the relevant interests that we have. So that is going to bring us essentially back to applications and how we can use this. So I'm just going to go throw on the filler slide here and turn it over to the audience. Uh, I'm trying to take a look for additional questions. Are there other things um, that you have questions? We have about, I guess, five, six minutes uh, more of your time that I can that I can answer anything that's popped up. I think I see from Jan, what would you do if you see promoted on the title? Is it an advertisement? Yes, if you see promoted either on Google's job board, you see it on LinkedIn, it's a little blue letter that says promoted like in the top right. Yes, that means that that company has paid money to be a preferred search. That doesn't necessarily mean it's good or bad, but that does mean that you are being shown it forcefully rather than say a normal ranked search return. So normally in a search engine, um, you're supposed to get your results based upon uh, the number of matches in the web page that match what you're looking for. However, if it's a paid promotion, then something that may be lower on the rank gets bumped up to the top. So the only thing I say is just look carefully at it, make sure it actually matches what you're looking for. Uh, Nora asking about remote jobs, especially right now, same thing we can do. We can throw remote into our Boolean search to so say gather requirements and uh, analysis and remote, and that likely will pull up the positions that you're looking for. Keep in mind that when we're in a normal non-COVID world, remote positions are a lot more rare. So your search might be a little less fruitful, but right now you should find a lot of places that are remote okay. Are there any other questions that have popped up? Any questions about how to apply this? Uh, does LinkedIn filter based on other things in your profile, number of connections, completeness of profiles? Yes. Um, so there's a whole number of factors that go into the way that LinkedIn profiles are, are ranked. Um, I bet we probably have a full event on search engine optimization somewhere out there that will talk exactly about this. But there are a number of places on a LinkedIn profile that get weighted heavier than others. One, for example, is your about section or your summary sections that used to be called on LinkedIn. So you as candidates, you as professionals, make sure you fill that out and make it really robust. Make sure you talk about what you do, what skill set you have, because that's the first place LinkedIn looks for search engine optimization. Then you want to look at the rest of your profile and make it complete. But that means when you are searching, also the, the, uh, the people with the most complete profiles will show up for you first. And why that's a benefit is because if their profile is more fleshed out and complete, there's a likelihood there's more, they're more active on LinkedIn and more likely to get back at you. Um, let's see here. Uh, Nora asks, can you use numbers in your search? You should be able to. Um, I, I can't see a reason why not. Like I, as I mentioned a lot earlier, like we could look for HTML5. Um, so you could also do that to look for number of years of experience if I'm maybe understanding the, the, the direction you're going. That may not be the most effective way, but yes, numbers totally work. Um, let's see here. Uh, Nikki asked about filtering out older job search. So this is a good thing to keep in mind too. In general, you want to apply to jobs that have been posted the most recently. So when you are filtering for your jobs, filter for the ones that have been posted by age. And so if it's been posted that morning, that day, prioritize applying to those immediately. So you're on the top of the stack and then slowly make your way to the ones that have been posted for multiple weeks or a month or even longer. In general, I, while it's maybe not the most advantageous to apply to the older roles, I still think that you should because there's no reason. If it's still out there, there's still a chance that they might get back to you. Um, see, Nora then also asks, do you ever use a question mark? I am not sure when a question mark would be used. Do you have maybe have an example of what you're thinking about? Brad, we had the same question. I don't know if you saw there about using exclamation points too, but I wasn't sure 
in regards to what way? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good question. Yeah. So, oh, so fortunately with, uh, with the question mark, you don't have to ask a question. In fact, it's, um, the search engine doesn't really interpret it as you asking a question anyways. So don't, you don't have to use those exclamation points or question marks or anything like that. You should be fine without those. Um, I also had another question uh, in private chat was, and this might be a whole nother um, <laughs> training session, but um, was if recruiters, like if you learned this as being a recruiter and recruiters are using this, then how do you um, put the this terminology in your own LinkedIn profile for you to be found? Gotcha. So that's a, that's a great thing to take a look at. What I would recommend doing, and yes, this could totally be another workshop, um, use the, what we just did, take it, do a Boolean search, find a few resumes that represent the job that you want to be doing and pull out all the key terms, you know, manually grab a piece of paper, grab a notebook, whatever it is, write down those key terms that appear often over and over and over again, and massage your materials, your resume, your LinkedIn to fill up as many of those key terms on your own, uh, on your own profile as possible. I know it's easier said than done. Um, but I, again, if there's an SEO event, I can't imagine it wouldn't pop up. And then Nora was asking, what's a, a good place to find examples of good tech resumes? This is, that's, that's a hard one, especially because many people do not agree on what is a good versus a bad resume. And you'd think that'd be a little bit more of a consensus, but, but the fact of the matter is that most people don't. To be completely honest, when I'm looking at a new industry, there is, there's a couple of ways I'll do a bit. One is I will do a LinkedIn search and I will look for someone who has a example resume of what I'm looking for. So let's say it's a business analyst. I'll go through a few profiles, see if people have their resumes posted. I'll take a look at multiples of those resumes, see what works, see what doesn't work. Also, this is one where really a Google search and being like software developer resumes, data science resumes. And again, take a look at the way people are writing them, take a look at the key terms that are being utilized and synthesize them all together to create the strongest resume you can. So not a simple answer, but you can certainly use the tools at your disposal to find those. All right, and I know that does bring us to time. Do you have any other questions we wanna cover? I am not seeing anything else right now. I'm trying to go back and forth between social and everything, but I think you've answered everything in the chat, at least so far that I found in social as well. Um, we're getting some thank yous in the chat, but I think you've done a good job of going through all the questions. Yeah, great. Um, if any of you um, have any further questions, let me add in my LinkedIn right now. So you can easily add me. Um, you can ask any other questions. Please connect with me. I'm always happy to build my, uh, my base on the East Coast and especially, especially in Miami whenever I can. So uh, grab that from the chat. You should be good to go. Perfect. Thank you so much, Brad. And I will, uh, I'll make sure that we send out a follow-up email to everybody on in the Zoom today um, with Brad Carey's information, some links to GA um, and also to some of our um, Oh, Carrie said, and this deck. Thank you, Carrie. Um, and also some of our videos that we have on YouTube just for our career workshops to help anybody else out that is looking. Um, but I think that is uh, a good way to end this up. And um, Carrie, do you have any last minute comments or anything that you wanted to add before we go? Um, just that we will continue to do these workshops, but we do have some live right now at our website as well that you can access to. Um, ga.co slash MIA events. Um, if you find any that you'd like, email me. And because you're part of Palm Beach Tech, you'll get a discount code to access it for free. Um, but Nikki and I will make sure to connect, bring Brad back again for a LinkedIn one, a resume building one, a LinkedIn networking. Um, and we have a, tons of resources that we can share with you guys. So email me, stay tuned for more. And if you find any on the GA website that are not free, also send me a message so we can give you a code. <laughs> That's Perfect. it. Perfect. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thanks so much, Brad, and everybody, of course, for joining us this morning. I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks so much. Glad to be here. All right. Thank you. Bye.